Jesus' mighty name I pray, Amen. Hey kids, it's great to see you again. My name is Kuya Gino. You caught me praying and fasting. And by the way, Happy New Year! Woohoo! I hope you had a wonderful time with your family during the holidays. And welcome to our brand new series called Recharge, Plug Into God's Word. Every January, we usually think of renewing ourselves by creating New Year resolutions like exercising more or eating healthy or praying more. But actually, these practices can be done at any time or at any month, whenever we can and whenever the need arises. It's like Ate Avi preparing for her river crossing trip. Did you see her video last week? She prepared for that mentally, physically, and spiritually. Now, I would understand her because we need more time to get ready for a challenge. For me, maybe this year, a brand new project. And for you kids, a brand new semester or quarter in school. But whatever our reasons may be, we all need preparation, guidance, and purpose to fulfill our goals. And I don't know about you, but I need them fast. Not the hurry type, but the focusing, the asking, the seeking, and thanking type of fast. Focus, ask, seek, think. Can you say these verse with me? Focus, ask, seek, think. Faster. Focus, ask, seek, think. Faster. Focus, ask, seek, think. Faster. Awesome. And that will be our topic for today. Fast. Pray expectantly. Matthew 4 verses 2 to 4 say, After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he, or Jesus, was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Some of you may ask, Kuya, what is fasting? Fasting is voluntarily stopping an activity like eating, using your gadgets, playing games, or watching movies to enjoy God's presence. We replace those activities with fruitful time with God, such as praying, reading God's word, or worshiping God. We often think that Jesus Christ doesn't need to pray or fast because He is God. But in our passage, Jesus showed us the importance of fasting. He was able to counter what the devil was making Him do. Let's look at verses 3 and 4 more closely now. See here, the devil addressed Him as the Son of God and challenged Jesus to change the stone into bread. The devil was trying to distract Jesus to stop his time with the Lord. He wanted Christ to depend on his power rather than on God. How did Jesus respond? He used scripture, an Old Testament verse found in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, that says, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. This makes me realize that the devil can use truths too, verses, to distract us from honoring God. We saw in the Bible that he tried tempting Jesus and calling him God, challenging him to turn the stone into bread. So why is it important to fast and pray? Choose the letter with a false statement. Letter A, because God expects us to fast. Letter B, because the devil also memorizes God's word. Letter C, because it will give me, give us more blessings like a thinner body and a better outlook in life. 
or letter D, because we need to prepare for ministry. So what is the false statement? D? C? T? What's the answer? Correct! The false statement is letter C. Although letter C is probable because God gives wisdom on how to live abundantly and not eating food can detoxify the body, but the main focus of prayer and fasting is God Himself and His ministry. That's why letter A, letter B, and letter D are true. Now the next question for us is, how does someone fast? Hmm, well there are many ways. One is food. <laughs> or social media. Goodbye. Or sports. Or recreational activities. Goodbye. All of these sacrifices because we want to have more time with the Lord. And some of you are already thinking about this one. Nope, nah, -uh. we don't fast our studies, important errands, or work for the adults <laughs> because we have to fulfill them. That glorifies God. If you still have questions, stick around. I'll be providing more guidelines later. Imagine this bag is your stomach and your mind combined. Instead of filling it with the usual things like your sports, you know, recreational activities, or your game time. <laughs> Goodbye game time, YouTube, Netflix, and your gadgets. Oh no, goodbye. Or food. Goodbye. I'm gonna miss you, but for a while. We replace it with more time with God, like praying, reading the Bible, ooh, worshiping God, or serving in ministry. In another sense, instead of being uh. busog or all filled up with the usual things, we fill ourselves with godly wisdom and practices that would in turn give us fulfillment. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. Yummy! Above all, we fast with a sincere heart. Matthew 6 verses 17 to 18 say, But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. There are some people in the passage who brag about praying and fasting by showing a disfigured face. Oh, I'm hungry. What's wrong with you? Uh, no, I'm praying, I'm fasting, doing this for God. They are searching for attention and praises from others. We shouldn't do that. What we need to do is fast. F-A-S-T. F. Focus on God by stopping an activity and removing all distractions. A. Ask for God's forgiveness and for your prayer requests. S. Seek. Seek His will through His Word. And T. Thank Him for the wonderful things He will do for us. Focus, ask, seek, and thank, all with a sincere heart. Do you have a sincere heart? A sincere love for the Lord? If you are unsure, then pray this prayer with me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for reminding us to focus on you. We ask, Lord, for your forgiveness because we are prioritizing other things and prioritizing ourselves. Right now, we seek for the truth. We seek you, Lord. Open the eyes of our hearts and the eyes of our mind so that we can see you clearly. We accept you as our Lord and Savior. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us the opportunity to 
look at you, to experience you, and to pray to you, the only true God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. If you pray that prayer, then welcome to God's family. You know what's great about being part of a church? Is you don't have to do it alone. This coming January 10 to 15, we will be praying and fasting together. Booklets will also be available. But don't you worry, we will also have a kid's version of it. Look, here's a sample. Fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, where did that come from? <laughs> Here. Cool, right? You may actually scan the QR code below to access the materials. If you have other questions, please don't hesitate to ask your squad leaders or your parents. Was that my stomach? Oh, what's that verse again? Oh, Matthew 4, verse 4. Man must not live only on bread. He must also live on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Whew. You know, Matthew 4, verse 4 should be our memory verse. So let's remember that, okay? All right, that ends our time together. My name is Kuya Gina, and I hope to see you next week here in Next Gen Live. Happy prayer and fasting week, everyone! And don't forget, discuss the questions that are flashed on your screen. Want to be part of a next-gen small group via Zoom? If you are 7 to 12 years old, you can be part of an online squad or small group by registering on the link in the description or scanning this QR code. Hope to see you there!